Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. This video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I learned to code. Maybe you want to learn to code yourself and you need to understand what path to go. Or maybe you don't wanna know how to code and you just wanna know how I learned to code, which in that case, I'm confused why you're here. But <laughs> anyways, hopefully this video is helpful and hopefully you guys enjoy a little bit of a story of my background and how I got to where I am today as the, the master coder here on the internet, so yeah. If you follow this path, maybe someday you'll get to be as, as elite and powerful as I am. Maybe. So obviously technology is very important in people's lives. It's very popular in careers now, and a lot of people are needing to know how to code, even if they're not going into software development or software engineering. I was fortunate that I, uh, I realized this pretty early on, and I started to learn some technology stuff and coding in high school. Now before I get into all of the detail, I want you to check out our sponsor, MailerLite. This is a newsletter system that I would recommend if you want to start sharing your learning journey for code. This is the best way to do it. Basically, one of the best ways to learn is to have a driving force, and one of those forces can be having to share the information you learn with other people following your newsletter. So I'll leave a link for you guys to MailerLite in the description. Highly recommend it. And hey, for all you know, maybe your future boss will subscribe to your newsletter and boom, you get a job that way. That's basically how my YouTube channel worked out for me. I got lots of job opportunities by sharing my knowledge with the community. All right, step one, have less to do. <laughs> it seems a lot easier than it is to actually do, <laughs> but basically one of the reasons I was able to get into coding is because I was in high school. I also had like a ton of more ambition back in the day. Now I'm like old and stuff, but back then, you know, I was in a couple sports and I did a couple extracurricular activities, but I was able to fit in some time learning how to code. And one of the ways I did this is by, by having a fairly easy course load. So one of the classes I was in called Internet Essentials, it's basically where you learned how to like Google and do like very basic stuff. Well, this is basically my, my study hall where I got to learn how to code and learn how to build HTML websites and pick up some PHP and test out some Python and Java. And this is where I basically went into my exploratory phase. So step one is to just get some free time and just start exploring. Don't feel like you have to pick a path before you start. Just toy around, figure out what is fun, what is exciting. You don't have to be like, oh, I'm gonna be a quantum computing engineer and then only study that because you haven't developed any experience in that. You don't know if that's gonna fit with you or if, if it really clicks. So yeah, get some free time and just start exploring. So this is the time where I really tried to find fun in technology and it's where I started my YouTube channel because one of the topics I was studying was database design. I read books on it and was like, what in the world? This makes no sense. I watched YouTube videos. Ain't no one got good videos on database design. So I just created some of my own and this is where things really kick started and people started asking for more videos. So that kind of kept me accountable to, to learning more stuff and producing more content. So again, this is where I can pitch my sponsor. If you're looking for a way to basically have accountability, try doing a, a weekly newsletter where you're sharing information about technology. So step two is to find a really strong driving force. So maybe that's a YouTube channel or a newsletter, but for me, this was a job. A, a job opportunity came up through my YouTube channel. I decided to take it even though I had no experience in the programming language that was necessary and I really had no idea what I was doing. I was just some stupid high schooler who, uh, you know, knew a little bit about technology, just tinkering. Now, I mean, I'm much more mature now. I'm not a stupid high schooler, but I still really don't know much. I'm still, I'm, it's always a learning journey. But anyways, the step two for me was to find that driving force, which was a job. This is where I had to start producing and had to start learning. Since then, I've had various jobs. Unfortunately, I have been hit with the, the millennial plague where you can't keep a job for like a year or more. So since high school, I've had like four or five tech jobs and a couple like sort of tech jobs and various other things. But this has basically given me a lot of experience in, in various topics. And I'm pretty thoroughly informed about various different technology pieces. So I kind of went down the route of full stack development and learned about, you know, C Sharp for web development, JavaScript, and some other languages like that. So step three is to get good at a particular skill. And notice that this is step three, not step one. Step one is not master a technology. <laughs> Step one is just to have fun. Step three is when you get good at a skill. In my case, it was full stack web development. I began to specialize because I, I developed some uh, experience or to steal stuff from 
Linux quiet. To, to steal from Cal Newport, I developed some career capital in this, this, uh, this technology stack, full stack web development. Then lastly, I was getting good at full stack development, but I wanted a more systematic approach to learning. I decided to go back to school. I got my computer science degree, and this is basically where I went through systematic pieces of a, of a discipline and learned more outside of my comfort zone. So that's what step four is learn out of your comfort zone and begin to study. You don't have to go to school. You can go to a boot camp or you can just study stuff online or just pick up some hard books, but try to stretch your brain practicing things you're not good at. That's how you're gonna get better. So there's lots of good resources out there. There's Udemy, there's Pluralsight, there's uh, so many, I can't even think of any. There's Skillshare, there's Pramp if you want some interview experience and lots, lots more. So yeah, very simple. You guys got a little bit of a taste of my life. I started in high school, just begin to tinker around, enjoyed technology, this is the fun phase. It should never be miserable, <laughs> it should be fun. Step two was I began to develop skills rather than just had fun. So step one is where you know I set up a Minecraft server, I set up a cute little HTML page that had buttons. Step two was when I got a job and I had to actually build a small application using full stack web development. So this is where I started to learn C Sharp and some JavaScript and Angular and all that junk. Step three was when I, uh, shoot, I already forget. Get good at a particular skill. So this is where I got numerous positions and had numerous challenges in full stack web development and databases. And I began to get really good at that particular set of skills. And then step four is to just systematically study to basically stretch your mind and learn new things and figure out different areas of technology you might be interested in. So yeah, very simple, but let me know what is your guys' strategy to learn? How did you go about becoming the, the computer programming software engineering master that you are? Yeah, so thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe and check out our sponsor MailerLite and peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video.